Hello, thank you so much for checking out my video. As I was editing this video to show you how you could receive pretty much any radio frequency through your computer and listen in, I realized I didn't mention this, so I wanted to mention it first for those of you that uh, maybe don't want to spend the money, which it isn't very much, but don't want to spend the money on, on the following video on the awesome USB thing. You can just plug into your computer and be able to listen to radio frequencies. There is a couple things you can do through the internet. Uh, the following video shows you how to get it without the internet, but this, you could listen through the internet. Sometimes people provide certain radio frequencies. Uh, they're called feeds that you can listen to. So a really good resource for that is broadcastify.com. And I'll put a link below, uh, but click on listen. And then what you can do very much like I'll show you in, in the, the coming video on radioreference.com. For Broadcastify, you can choose your area, or maybe you want to listen to another area. Let's say I wanted to listen to where I am. I'm in King County, Illinois. Maybe I want to listen to the police. Well, what I can do is I can scroll down now, and I can press play, and it will play if someone's sharing that that feed. The thing is, sometimes you'll live in an area where no one's sharing the feed, and you can't listen. If you don't have a computer, you can also go to at least the Google Play Store, I'm sure, I'm sure there's an Apple version as well. And they have the scanner radio. And what it does is it uses Broadcastify. And you can install that on your phone and receive any of the, the shared feeds that are on Broadcastify. So this could be a really nice thing to, to do in the meantime, while you're waiting for your USB dongle to come in that I'll show in the following video. So check that out. And please, Continue to watch the upcoming video because I think it's some pretty cool stuff. I think you'll like it a lot. Thanks. Hello. Today I wanted to show you a really, really cool thing that you can buy and connect to your computer. And you can listen to a lot of different radio stations. I don't want to say every radio station, but uh, a lot of different radio frequencies. So let me show you how it works first. Um, I'm just going to show you really quickly. I have something connected to my computer that I'm going to show you in a little bit. And all I have to do is run this program called SDR Sharp. And when I turn it on, you'll see that I'm able to get radio stations and I can actually, um, I can actually see the radio frequencies. So watch when I hit play. And if I click, hopefully you can still hear me. If I click to another spot, um, obviously I'm not receiving it. Let me turn this down really quickly. Let me, all right. So if I click on another spot, obviously you'll see there's nothing there. But as I scroll through, I can find other radio stations. So let me show you how that works. All right, now I'm in my basement right now, so I don't have the best reception. Uh, my antenna is just sitting on my desk right now. So I am not getting the best reception, but you can see I can pull in some radio, uh, radio stations there. But the cool thing is it doesn't have to be just normal radio stations. So let me show you this. There's a website called Radio Reference. And Radio Reference, what it has is it has a lot it might have all, but it has a lot of the registered radio frequencies in the United States. So what we can do is we can go over here. This is radioreference.com. We go to databases, frequency database. Now, all of this is legal. You can do this. We're not broadcasting. So you can listen all you want and you don't need a license. If you were to broadcast, say you were a ham radio operator like me and you wanted to send uh, radio frequencies out, you can't do that without a license uh, on most frequencies. But so right here, we've got radioreference.com. I went to databases, frequency database. And I'm just going to go to uh, where I am. I'm in Illinois. You can choose the county that you're in. And then what you can do is you can scroll through and you can find all the frequencies. Say I wanted to listen to the Kane County Sheriff uh, right here. 
Kane County Sheriff's Department at 159.15. So I could just go back here. I could go to 159. I'm sure there's a faster way to answer this. Uh, 0.15. And if I hit play, if my antenna was in a good position, I'd be able to hear it. Now, I don't know if I'll be able to hear it. We'll see. So right now, either they're not broadcasting, which definitely happens. It's a police station that, you know, they're not always going to be talking. <clears throat> Excuse me. Or I have a bad reception. So I'm not really sure which one that is, but I can guarantee you it would definitely work. So I could listen to the police. I could listen to fire. We go back to this. Um, there's information about Office of Emergency Management. Uh, if there was some sort of emergency going on or a weather spotter uh, meeting, anything like that, I could listen in on that. I can listen in on the, the dispatch to the police. Uh, this would be for multiple towns. This is, this is specific to around where I live. However, I could also listen in on a lot of other things. Now, I'll pull that up in a minute. Something to pay attention to, though, is this program, SDR Sharp, is going to work very, very well with FM stations. So where it says FM, um, that means I'll be able to listen to it. If it says DMR, that means it's a digital mode radio. And I can actually listen in on that. Yeah, I run SDR Sharp, but then I run another program. That will be for another video. But I can definitely do that. You can even run listen to trunked radio for those of you that know what that is a lot of police stations have moved to trunked radio and you'll be able to listen to that but that does get a little bit more complicated if you're interested in this i wanted to show you what you would need to get uh, to be able to do this and i think it's pretty cool you can also listen to shortwave radio stations so stations from around the world you will benefit from a longer antenna so what I would do is this. This is the one I bought. I did buy another one. This one works really, really well. I'm really, I, I'm excited about this one. The biggest reason why I'm excited about this is, um, well, to describe it first, this, I believe these were sold in Europe originally. Uh, and you could, you could, you could watch TV on your computer. Now in the United States, uh, that doesn't work because the TV stations are broadcast on different frequencies. Now this is what I was told, maybe I'm incorrect on that. However, I know for a fact that this works for listening to the radio. Now, this is called a software defined radio. That's what this SDR stands for, software defined radio. And what it can do is it can listen in um, to the radio stations I was showing you, as well as, and this is why I like this one, as well as high frequency. So what we were just listening to was called VHF, very high frequency, uh, and UHF, ultra high frequency. I didn't move up there yet, but those are the normal sort of FM local stations. But to listen to stations from around the world, then you can do the HF. This is why I like this one a lot. So you would never have to really open it up if you're just a normal user. It does describe some of the things if if you needed it. But for the most part, all you need to know is this plugs into the USB and then this end plugs into an antenna, which I'll show you in a minute. <clears throat> $23 and this will be shipped to you. I believe it is Prime. If I was logged in, I think it's Prime. And it would send to you and then you will be able to listen to the radio. Now, this would be without the use of internet. Once it's set up, it just works. In addition to this, you would have to buy an antenna, something like this. I like this. This is a three pack. It has the antenna base. This is a magnetic antenna base. You'd want to put that on something metal to make it a good ground plane. If that doesn't make sense to you, just put it on maybe a filing cabinet or a big metal top, uh, like a lid. Let me grab. So I have this lid from a uh, popcorn tin from Menards. You could just put it on, on this lid and set it somewhere, and preferably not in the basement like I am. And that would, that would make this antenna work. And then you would connect different antennas depending on which frequencies you wanted. To get a lot of this information, all you have to do is go to RTL slash sdr.com and I'll put the link below and there's a quick start guide. And the great thing about this is you just literally follow it in order. It has this quick start guide. If I click on it, I believe this is it. Wonderful. It's the same page. 
All right. So you literally just go step by step in order and you go through all the settings and by the end, it'll work. And it's really that easy. Then you can start playing around with different things. There are different articles on here to figure out more information. For instance, if you are interested in the digital mode radio, you can even receive things. You can listen to the International Space Station. You can listen to, if you go back to here, if I go back to the main database, instead of choosing states and counties, you can actually look at nationwide frequencies. So let's look at, uh, I guess, there we go, nationwide frequencies. And there's a bunch of different nationwide frequency information that you can get if you wanted to listen to the railroads. Say you really, really like the railroads. I'll open that up. You want to listen to uh, the family radio. Uh, that would be those little two-way radios that people buy. It's supposed to go 22, 28 miles, which they don't. Uh, they do if you're going mountaintop to mountaintop. But you can listen in on those. This will give you the frequencies that you need to listen to, to listen to the railroad. And you can listen. That's totally fine. You can listen to Civil Air Patrol, which is the civilian side of the United States Air Force, as long as they're not encrypting it. Sometimes they'll encrypt it, but most of the time you're able to listen to it. Encryption means basically you need eh, almost like a password to be able to listen to it. It's called an encryption key, but you can listen to the uh, National Weather Service. So if I click on that, you'll see these weather stations. I know this one is close to me. Uh, let me make sure that's correct. Yeah, one, six. That's interesting. Huh. All right, so let me see, 162.55. So if I go back here and I go to 162.55 and I hit play. All right, so maybe. First Saturday night, mostly cloudy. Chance of showers in the evening, then a chance of light rain after midnight. All right, so obviously this frequency was correct. This one did not seem to be. I'm not sure why that is. I guess five five. Oh, that would be channel six. So I'm out of out of range of that. And you did hear it was a bad reception. That doesn't happen if you're not in your basement. Okay, if you're upstairs, uh, especially in in a a wood frame house. I'm in a brick house, so it does block some of those frequencies. But if I went outside with my computer, it would be perfect. So this is an awesome opportunity very affordably to get in to be able to listen to a lot of different radio stations. You can also listen to HF. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below, subscribe if you liked my video, and give it a thumbs up. Share it. Help me get the word out. I'd love to be able to uh, share my knowledge with a lot of other people. In the future, I'm going to show you some of my, my uh, amateur radio equipment and how I'm able to actually communicate around the world just from my house. So stay tuned, check out my videos and have a wonderful day. Thank you.